Welcome back to Team V503. I am Scott Schiller for Ron Fitzpatrick Jeep Parts. Want to do a series of videos here again. Now it's going to be a three-parter because I'd like to keep these so you know a little short one's not some big 30-minute long deal. So we're going to break this up into three parts. But what I want to show you in this next little bit of videos here, and we agreed to put these together in a playlist because I know they do jump around. I'm putting out the videos in exactly the same order as I filmed them and how I worked at them. And there was reasons for what I did and why I did it. But we're going to go move to this part right now. This is the fuel strainer assembly. And you see how nice it came out here. In this video, we're going to be focusing on this top cap and these fittings. And then we'll go ahead and install it on the top of the Jeep. In the next couple of videos, I'll show you how the fuel bowl, we did that with the zinc plating with Lou Ladwig and all the different filters that are inside there that are available today. All right, let's dive in. The fuel strainer assembly was one of the first items that I removed from the Jeep, and I sandblasted it and primed it and painted it, but I left the original gasket, it's probably not the original gasket, but the gasket that was in it intact because I didn't want to shoot that area with the sandblaster. And as you see, I've stored this for a while and it's rusted up, so I'm going to have to remove this gasket now, and I've got myself a little dental pick, and you want to be really careful when you remove this because you don't want to scratch the edges or cause any areas where it might leak. I've got a little work to do here to get this back to where it won't cause any rust or any debris to get into the fuel lines. So I'll try to get in here without scratching anything and just pop up that original gasket. And then underneath there, you'll see where it's been sitting for a while. It's all crusty and it's rusty. So I'll take this outside and clean it up with the wire wheel and then we can proceed. But I've got quite a little bit of a mess here, even though it's been painted and cleaned up before. It sat in a box for a while and that's what happens. Okay, I've got everything all cleaned up here. You see there's a little bit of pitting on the inside there. Nothing that I'm concerned with. Nothing that I don't think that a new gasket won't seal up. And I've also made sure that the orifices were clean and blew those out with air. So everything is clean and ready to go. I've got my gasket kit here from Ron Fitzpatrick G Parts. And you'll notice there's three diameter gaskets. We're only going to be concerned with the large one at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and install this dry. And I'm going to just use my thumb to push it into the groove there and get it seated. I don't believe you need to use any sealant on this, although I have heard of some folks using like a Permatex number two just to seal the backside. I'm pretty faithful and, and almost positive that it's going to be okay with just dry. We'll have to see in the future, but that's the way we're going to do it for now, as I believe that's the way the manual would tell you to do it. Just make sure everything's all seated up nice, and then we can proceed. We're going to move to a cleaner work environment here. I've got a white backer board here so you can see everything clearly. First, I'll show you the pipe reducing bushings. That's how they're listed in the parts manual. And then we've got an elbow, 516s inverted flare tube. And then last but not least, we have a connector, 516s inverted flare tube as well. And those bushings there, I've actually done a little bit of research on. I couldn't actually find why they use two pipe reducing bushings on this particular application for this filter. My only guess is, is that this is probably used for multiple applications and fuel lines. If you know the answer to that question, please uh, share it with us in the comments below after the video. So I'm going to go ahead here and we're going to put the reducing bushings in first. And I'm going to go ahead and set those up. At, and one goes on the inside of the filter, as you can see it on top, and one goes on the out. First, I'm going to install a little high temp Permatex fuel and oil sealant to the threads. And I'm just going to cover my threads just to the top. You don't want to use too much and you don't want to use too little. So I'll go ahead and apply it here to the threads and then I'll use my finger to kind of smear it out and even it out. That would be too globby in my opinion. So I'm going to go ahead and just take my finger and I'll wipe some of this off, thus wearing the protective gloves. You want to get those threads coated just about how I've got them right there. That'll make a nice seal. I'm going to install my first bushing here onto the inside of the cap. As you see, it's embossed and marked there on the top. And at first, I'm just going to spin it in with my hand. And as soon as I get into a few threads, I'm going to turn it back a little bit, back and forth, just to make sure that sealant works its way into both sides of the threads. After we get them hand tight there, we'll go ahead and we'll grab our 5 8 inch box end open end wrench. That's a 12 point that'll hold that really nice. And I'm just going to go ahead now and tighten these up again. I'm just going to work them back and forth a little bit. I like to do that. I feel that it allows for your sealant not to be simply just pushed out on the threads as you tighten the bolt or the fitting in there. We'll go ahead and give this one last good snug. You want these to be pretty tight so you can hold that cap there with your hand and make sure that they bottom out. And once that fitting bottoms out, just give it one more last little tweak in just to be secure. You are putting fuel through these fittings. You'll feel in your hand there, as I described, bottom out. And then right there, I'm getting at that last little reef and that's going to seal everything up really, really nice. Go ahead next and install the bushing in the outside of the cap. But before I do, I'm going to go ahead and take a rag and just wipe up this excess sealant here so it'll make for a nice clean job. If you wait too long, the sealant hardens up and gets hard to remove. Okay, so we've got our two reducing bushings set in there, one on the outside, as you see it's marked out on the top of the cap, and one on the inside. Make sure you can differentiate between those two before we install our next fittings. 
I'm going to install next the connector, the 516's inverted flare tube connector. And again, I'm going to use the sealant on the threads. Some folks don't like to use a sealant on the threads. I've had very good luck with this in a lot of applications over the years with not only Jeeps but different automobiles. So I like to go ahead and use the sealant. If you don't and you can do, get away with it with no leaks, and that's fantastic too. I guess it goes back to the adage, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. So we've got the coat threads all coated up the same way we did with the reducers. And again, I'm just going to spin this in by hand and then spin it back a little bit back and forth to work that sealant into those threads. After I get it all in there hand tight, I'm going to go ahead here and get my flare nut wrench, the 5 8 inch flare nut wrench. And the reason I'm demonstrating this is this is the actual wrench is designed to work over fittings when you have lines on them. So we'll just go ahead and use that to tighten the rest of the way. Again, once you get that brass fitting, you'll feel almost like a little push. It's hard for me to describe exactly what it is. I call it a stop. You'll get it down just so tight and you'll feel like it gets hard to turn. When it gets to that point, that's when you want to give it that one last little snuggin, and that's what's going to give you your seal. And make sure that no fuel can leak out of those joints. Here we go. I'll show you one more time. Right here we get to the end. It feels nice and snug. I'm going to give it one more, probably like a quarter turn, and I know that's going to seal up exactly the way it's supposed to. The last fitting we're going to install in this video is going to be the elbow, the 516's inverted flare tube, and we're going to put the seal on the threads the same way as we did the other fittings. We're going to save a little time here in the video. It's already done, and I've already got that spun on with my finger. Now, you are going to want to use an open-end wrench or some sort of, I've got a special pair of Kinex pliers here, and I love these pliers because they're almost perfect when you put them on odd-shaped things and you don't get any slippage, but you're going to want to hold those pliers or that wrench. See how I've got it on the fat meat of that elbow? You don't want to put it in the center there where the hole or the opening is for the flare fitting because if you do you stand the risk of wrenching on that very thin part of the fitting and you're going to damage it so stay on the outside here so you're out of the way of the other fitting and then tighten that down until you feel it just about seat but you want it facing forward to towards you and again that elbow goes on the outside of the cap I want to show you here lastly the pipe plugs are quarter inch pipe plugs that I installed way back when I sandblasted and painted this and I already put the sealant on and painted them. We'll look at the location here of where the fuel strainer goes on the tub and I'll give you the measurements here. The holes are, that I've got drilled are originals. If you measure down from the inside of the rib there on the tub where you see my hand, you're going to find a measurement at 2 and 7 eighths and then come over from the opposite side square and it's going to be 5 and a quarter for that first hole. You can't get a measurement off that round radius where my hand is so we'll measure down and over first and then you can go back to that first hole I showed you and then the difference between the two holes from center to center is 4 and 3 sixteenths on a level line square from that measurement. It's a little difficult to get your measurements in there because of that radius but if you do it that way, if you don't have your holes there, you should be able to line this up pretty well. The drill bit size for the hole is 13 30 seconds as to accommodate the 3 8 inch bolt we're going to be installing. Okay, we'll take a look at here at the hardware. It's on the back side here of my cover, and I've got a flat washer, a lock washer, and the nut. And the bolt size is 3 8 24 by 1 inch, and that's going to be installed just like that. And then the holes will go through the tub to the back side, and we'll be fastening them from the inside of the glove box. I'm going to go ahead now and remove the nut, the lock washer, and the flat washer, and then we'll simply take the bolt from the outside here, and we'll slide it through the back side of this bracket, and then into the hole on the firewall there of the tub, and that should be able to, to be enough to hold that in there so you can reach inside and install your other fasteners. Again, you're going to have to go through the glove box to put the fasteners on the back side, but that'll hold it right there for the time in until we get our fasteners in order and reach around here and get them installed. So you can go ahead and in the inside of the glove box, and the order would be flat washer first, lock washer, and then nut, and then go ahead and tighten them down. I'll show you at the end of the video here where those fasteners are located. Our next step after we get everything all tightened down is we've got this fuel line that we installed on the tub. It's the main fuel line that comes from the gas tank on the outside of the gas tank. And we're going to go ahead once again and install our sealant just like we did with the fittings in, earlier in the video. Just enough to cover the threads. Use your finger there to smooth it out if you need to. You don't want too much on there and get it globbed up or inside the fuel line. Good to get a chance here to demonstrate to you the flare wrench and how that exactly works around the fuel lines. Before I do, notice the little flared end here to the fuel line. You're going to want to make sure that that goes perfectly in square to your fitting before you install the actual fitting or the nut or the threads into that fitting. If it's not perfectly square, make your adjustments now and don't try to force it in using the nut portion of that fitting because if you do, you'll wind up cross-threading it or and well damaging the fittings that you already installed. So make sure it's nice and square and everything spins and it should go in real easy. You should be able to spin the first part of the fitting in by hand, then use that flare wrench. As if you notice, I'm putting it over the top of the fuel line itself and then tightening it down. 
I'm pretty confident this won't leak, and you notice here that I've got my line away from the air filter cleaner bracket here so it doesn't rub, and I'm making sure that everything does not have any spot to rub through. We'll leave it at that, and the next area we'll be connecting to will be the elbow, and that'll be in our next video. Take a look here inside the glove box, and I'll show you how the fasteners are organized. Again, flat washer against the firewall, lock washer, and then the nut. You can tighten those down by using a wrench from the front side and reaching around with a socket on the inside seems to be the easiest way. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do so by clicking that subscribe button down there and also ding that little bell one time and that way you'll know and get notifications when we release the next videos. They're going to start coming out pretty frequently now and it's just we got to catch them back up. As you see, the Jeep is almost done, but I've got a lot of catching up to do on the videos. So here we go. Till next time, my friends, keep it safe, keep that fuel strain, and happy Jeeping.